the top now. No, nothing can move you. These people will do anything to get you distracted. It amazed me how all of a sudden we got a ton of money coming to Ukraine when we were not in war with Ukraine five years ago. We weren't. We had some issues, but we were not in full-scale war. And we taking billions of dollars of the American people money and giving it to those guys to fight a battle that they're going to lose. Lindsey Graham, this is the best billion dollars we ever spent in my life. Now I get on that fool soon. And then you got over here with the migrant situation in the open, I mean, flood open. Let me tell folks, I live in New York City. You guys don't understand how bad it is. And I'm telling you, I've seen some things. See, when people come from another culture into this culture, they're going to bring that culture and their lifestyle with them. They're not going to be Americanized. Certain things that they do down there are legal. Don't think just because you come to the United States, you expect them not to know that it's not illegal to do that. There will be some illegal activity because a lot of them don't know. So it's nothing for me to go around the block and see some guy pimping some girls because in that culture, it's, it's, it's not illegal. It's part of lifestyle, making money in certain parts of the world. It's okay. Sex work is okay. It's a way of making a living. Now, the pimping thing, I don't understand that. Well, I guess they would call that a manager. <laughs> but uh, it's the way you like. Selling drugs, thievery, all that stuff is rampant in those areas. That's why a lot of them moved. But don't you dare think that all of them that's coming here are on the up and up. You got some infiltrator, you got some former gang member, you got some former from former um drug dealers, the whole nine yards in those batches that's coming here into the United States. And guess what they're gonna do when they get here? And here in New York, we have a time up policy now. You get 90 days here. After that, you on your own. And when you got people who are on your own, on their own, with no job, no place to go, no nothing, guess what they're gonna do? They're gonna do survival tactics just to survive. And I get it because that's how a lot of us had to do when uh, in the seventies, especially during the crack era, when you couldn't even get a job. If you was on it, cause you got on that crack, man, it was, it was over with, man. It didn't, it controlled you. You couldn't control it. It was an addiction. It was a, it was a, it was a hard pill to swallow. You had no say so the crack did, but you born put these people in jail for something that they would never do if they was in their right mind, but the crack told them to do it. They just got to have that crack. Well, these headphones are hurting me. And I've seen buses upon buses upon buses upon buses coming in the droves in that one area of downtown Manhattan to that hotel in droves. The numbers are all balanced. Yeah, I do see some Africans. I do see some Haitians coming in, but not like the um, numbers of um, um, brown people coming into this country. And look, folks, let's be for real. Not all of them are seeking asylum, running from the dangerous cartel or, you know, we defaulted, we messed up their land. Now, if we messed up their land, there's a solution. We need to invest our money into them rebuilding their land. If we messed up their land, then the United States government need to rebuild it. Now, there's a reason why we messed up their land, because they got something we want. And like the bullies we are, we're going to beat you up and take it, and then and you're going to fear us. And my thing is, why are you running to the bullies who done bullied you out your own land? That don't even make sense. You're running to the bullies who is, who's bullying your own land. So the situation here in New York is getting kind of grim. I mean, it, it really pains me. I, now, what I can tell you is you see a lot of young couples because they people are taught, I guess, in their tradition about family, family values, marrying that young lady, building a family. And I see a lot of husband and wives and their children young, you know, like 21, 22, probably 17, 18 years old in America. 
with their families, looking for a better living, better life. And I, I get it. That's the American dream. That's the American way. Now, how you got here is, you know, is it's too relaxed. It's too relaxed, in my opinion, because now this thing is going to start destabilizing the New York economy because we are already struggling for money. We are already struggling for needs. And most of that money is going to the migrant workers. Now, I don't know how I got off subject. I was talking about Cornell West. So I'll get back to Cornell West in a moment. These people get, and I, I've talked to the people, and I'm trying to get one on the show with this new software I'm using right now. I don't know how I'm going to work this out, but um, I talk to people who work in these buildings with them. Um, they get a free weekly Metro card. Average New York City citizen don't get it. You have to be very, very low income in order to get a weekly Metro card. You got to go through all this government red tape just to get free Metro card. I want a free Metro card. <laughs> you know, I'm tired of paying $35, $62 a week for a Metro card just to get around the city. They get a stipend every month. In other words, they get cash, they get cash payment on a card every month. They get free clothing every month. A lot of them are living in these elaborate hotels with housekeeping. The housekeeping is going to come clean their room. They have a laundry where their laundry is getting done. They have a place in the hotel where they get meals, three meals a day. They got tablets and cell phones thanks to the government programs that our tax dollars go to. I see this every day. Now, once the 90 days is up, they're going to go start resorting to um, survival tactics. They don't have a work visa or nothing like that to work a job. These people are hiring them, paying them under the table, which does them no justice. I know it's the most money they ever made in their life, but you're not going back to your own country. You're trying to build a life here. And in New York City, the money you make in pennies on a dollar is not going to help you build anything here. So what's going to happen is a lot of these people are going to end up being on the street, living street life. That's why so many people in Chicago are fighting back, especially the black community, because you're putting, uh, uh, you putting people in our community that we don't know who they are and where they come from or what culture, or we don't know who's good, we don't know who's legit, and we don't know who's going to bring some trouble. We just don't know. Uh, I want to take you to Chicago. Let me see if I can do this. And let you see... Um, all right, so what you see here is uh, Mayor Johnson, the mayor of Chicago. All right, so let's listen to this real quick. All right, it said if you're if you only voted for Brandon Johnson because he was black, then you can't be mad at the results. This is what Jeremy Teller put. Now, Mayor Johnson is kissing the Democratic Party behind doing the Democratic thing. He's young. He has a future in the Democratic Party. So like most bootlicks, they're going to step on the people who put them in office. They're going to try to benign, but neglect. They're going to deny and neglect. They're going to, I can't think of the word, but they're going to try to gaslight them. They know it's a problem in um, Chicago. Black folks are saying, uh, 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 no, 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 no. We are trying to build our own communities just like any other, any other ethnic organization, any other heritage, any other lineage. We're trying to build our own neighborhoods and let us do it. We don't try to infiltrate the Spanish neighborhood. We appreciate them building their own neighborhoods. We go in there and partake in their culture. Same thing with the Jewish community. Same thing with the Asian community, Chinatown, the whole nine yards. Let us build ours. Why you got to try to send these people here? Hours before the meeting, neighbors held a protest outside blasting the plan. We ain't having that, no. You want to tell us what to do in our park? You cannot do that. We pay our money. Some calling for more transparency from the fifth floor. And what I want to say is to Mayor Brandon Johnson, mm -hmm. we are disappointed in you. 
This is the community that supported you. How dare you? We've reached out to Mayor Brandon Johnson's office for his response to the community's reaction, but have not yet heard back. Hours before the meeting, neighbors held a protest outside blasting the plane. And you ain't going to hear from Mayor Johnson. You just not going to hear from this guy. He's Obama. Look here. Well, I got your black people. You like me. I got your back. Don't worry. I got you. Like that Negro. I'm the president of all people. Negro, if you don't go sit your behind down, we know that. But that don't mean you can't do nothing for your people. Your people meaning black, but he's really black Kenyan. He's not, he has no black heritage linked to this country. Other than the fact that he was born here, but his heritage does not go back here. The most heritage he have that's tied to this country is his white Kansas family, which is tied to wealth. Now back to Brandon Johnson, the black community is saying, ah, 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 no, Negro, please, we're going to push back on you. So here's another thing. This is uh, mayor trying to talk to the UAW workers. If you want an economy that works, you got to invest in the people. This world doesn't move without the workers. Mayor Brandon Johnson. Well, when are you going to invest in the people, Brandon Johnson? More important, when you're going to invest in your people, because you were black before you got elected. And what have you done for black people before? What are you doing now? And what do you plan on doing? Because right now, we don't see you doing nothing but trying to destabilize the neighborhoods that they built. Let me go to another segment. Here's Brandon again. Let's go, Brandon. Julia said the self-proclaimed sanctuary city of Chicago is now getting as many as 22 buses per day. New York is getting more than that. I'm just telling you right now, just over there by the Roosevelt Hotel, they're getting about 20 buses a day. I'm not talking about what's going on in Staten Island, where the Staten Island people are clapping back. My question is, New York, black New Yorkers, people ask why black New Yorkers are not clapping back uh, in their neighborhoods, because New York ain't got too many black neighborhoods. <laughs> we ain't got too many black neighborhoods no more. Our neighborhoods have been mixed. And that's what this will do. This Whenever, and a lot of people don't want to talk about this, but whenever you have a community comes in, another community comes in your community in huge number, it takes away your voice. It drowns out your, 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 your personal community power in that neighborhood. That's why we don't understand why Chicago and Mayor Brandon is not sending these people to the Latino area of Chicago. Particularly, Communities where there are more Venezuelans, more Costa Ricans, more per Peruvians, and things like that. Uh, where, where are those guys? Why are they not going to those neighborhoods? Why you got to put them in black neighborhoods? What the black people saying, look, you skipping over neighborhoods. We ain't going to let you do that. We're focused on building our community. This is not the days of 10, 20 years ago. We're building our communities. We want them to build their communities and then we want to be able to enjoy one another community when it's time to collaborate. But here's Mayor Johnson. In 14 buses today. Um, we're getting word that it could be as many as 22. You know, this is a growing crisis, not just for the city of Chicago, but for the, for the entire globe. The population shift that we are experiencing as a result of the failure of, 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 of federal uh, policies is now impacting the people of Chicago in a very dramatic way. We know that we're starting to see more and more buses. It is, as everybody should recall, let's not forget why we're seeing those buses. It's because there are these border politicians, border, the borders of the United States have politicians who want to cause havoc in the rest of the country. You don't see him sending any. Now, let me stop there. <sighs> Blame it on the rain, blame it on the Republicans, blame it on anybody. You guys set yourself up to be a sanctuary city. Now, if I was a Democratic south of the border, a border leader, 
let alone a Republican border leader. And I don't have the means to try to be a sanctuary or anything. And I really don't want to go through all that to try to accommodate that. If I see that you're saying they're welcome to come here, because that's what Lori Lightfoot said. That's what Mayor um, Adams says at the beginning of his term. That was Mayor de Blasio. He said that. They're welcome here. If you're saying that they're welcome here, and you say you're a sanctuary city, and look, I used to watch Logan Runs, man. You, man, boy, if you don't get to the sanctuary city, man, you might die <laughs> on Logan Run. <laughs> so, so, uh, so, the concept of sanctuary pretty much means that once you get here, you're going to be good. And that is the message going around. People are saying, no, that is not the message. No, that is the message. That is the message. When you can go around um, um, Roosevelt Hotel and you see nothing but motor pass and motorbike preparing to put a dent into the um, a gig economy when it comes to Uber Eats and things like that, because that's the only way those guys can make money. I'm telling you, man, right around the Roosevelt, you get a chance to go down there, you can see about a, a, at least 100 mopeds that they got with your tax dollars. Our tax dollars. Now, I don't know how I got on that. I kind of lost my train of thought. But the bottom line is, you claim to be a sanctuary city. I don't want to deal with this. I like to make sure my load is light. So, I'm going to send them there. So, don't just blame it on these border city Leaders blaming on yourself by making yourself a sanctuary city. I don't see any other city that they're sending them to that's not a sanctuary city. You claim to be a sanctuary city, New York. You claim to be a sanctuary city, Chicago. So why are you getting mad when the Republicans or when the border towns are sending these people on a bus to you? Now, me, honestly speaking, we need to get a grip of this, tighten our entry into the country. Don't let people just come in here all willy-nilly because they are literally opening the gates for them. They're literally opening the gates and picking each one of them. And one day, I'm going to take time and show you that. They're picking who can come in at a certain time who cannot. A lot of them are mostly males coming into this country with no family. I guess give them an opportunity to go back and get their family up, make enough money where their family can come um, to America. And I get it. But my man, Great Black Shark, did a great video about the border crisis and um, the situation that's going in these different countries, the horrible conditions and, and the lack of law enforcement and the cartels and Yes, those are issues, but just unstabilized economy because of the things that the United States have done. See, we don't want to put sanctions on Venezuela. And that's why a lot of Venezuelans coming into this country, a lot of them identify with white Latinos, not black Latinos. We got black Latinos, but they identify with white. And a lot of them come into this country and they're getting white status. And they sure don't want no um, brown status. And they sure don't want no black status. So they come in and get white status. And a lot of them are coming here because their country have been hit with, hit with sanctions because we want that oil over there. And we don't like the current leadership when we try to have him replaced. And that man at that time was taking the reservoirs and building up Venezuela. But now we're putting sanction on them, hoping that the people will turn on this guy and the people not turning. They're turning around, leaving, coming here. So, no, you can't put that on just the border towns and their leaders. You got to put that on yourself. Me personally, oh, look, look, I, I know how to turn a bus around and send you back. Let me tell you something. If I feel it's going to destabilize my neighborhood and harm my people, you're going back. And I know most of you progressives are not liking that. Don't, ca uh, don't care. I told you, you can't put identity on me. I'm not conservative. I'm not left. I'm, not, I'm just me. I just have my moral of what I believe is right and wrong. You have what you believe is right and wrong. And I believe it's wrong to just let anybody come into this country all willy-nilly. Because you don't know what you got coming into this country. 
And a lot of people are escaping. They have done crimes and they feel America is the best place to go where they could be undetected. And some of them heinous crimes. That's why in certain places I will not let my daughter or my son walk around in certain um, places where I know it has a fluctua uh, fluctuation of certain type of people. And it's not xenophobia. I just know that there's bad characters and people, you know, um, in every community. And when the numbers are greater than it should be, I'm not having my child go there without me. Got all the sex trafficking and all this kind of stuff going on. And people finding that their kids that was in the United States are all the way down in uh, Columbia and stuff like that. And there's no plight on the Colombian people. Most Colombian people are decent, hardworking people. But you got some people out there just trying to gain the system. And because the money is good, you got decent people tempted to become undecent people. Because that's survival living. See, folks, survival living puts you in a position where you got to do what you got to do to feed your family, to feed yourself. That's why here in New York City, they, they steal people um, headlights. Because headlights, you can make money stealing headlights. Good money. No, let me get back on, on this. I'm sorry anybody to Idaho. You don't see him sending anybody to South Dakota or Wyoming or Missouri, states that are controlled by the opposite part, by his party. Instead, he's sending them only. No, brother. Those are not sanctuary cities. That's why he's not sending them. Chicago claimed to be a sanctuary city. New York City claimed to be a sanctuary city. So you send them to the sanctuary cities that say, I'm willing to take them in. That is not hard. That is not rocket science. That is not something that, I mean, oh, I can't believe it. No, it makes sense. And you know it makes sense. But you don't want to believe it. Because you want to stay on your left side and say it's wrong. No, these people claim to be sanctuary cities. So I'm sending these people to the sanctuary city. I ain't going to send them back to the border. I'm not going to send them cross. Now, if I send them cross, you'll be mad at me. If I send them to a sanctuary city, you'll be mad at me. But you want me to keep them here, and I, I'm just not trying to handle that. Only to blue states. 14 blue All right, so. More information. 10 buses expected. Let me tell you, so New York is topping that every day just in one area. Just in one area, here's more outraged Chicagoans. Let sanctuary city politicians hear. Chicago Mayor Brandon Johnson wants to convert the Munson Park Field House into a shelter for 200 people. Now, the field house at this particular area is mostly there's a community center that um, catered toward the youth programs and activities for the youth. And that program don't have the funding, but they want to take that funding that should be going to that program and want to send it to help the migrant situation. And that's a part of destabilizing that community's infrastructure. When you take in finances from the people to give to another people, when those people really need it to advance the people in that area, that will cause destabilization in that particular neighborhood. Let's listen to what they have to say. And let me tell you something. This ain't Trumpers. This ain't Republicans. This is various communities coming together to remind a politician that we put you in office to care for the needs of our communities. Now, we worked hard to become, get on the page of America, the United States and the United Neighborhoods. And we're here showing that example, showing that as an example. We are united in going against you and what you're doing to the city.
Now, there's a sign at the podium say a welcoming city. So they want they want to shame these people saying that they're unwelcome. Let me see. Let me see if I can get that sign. Let me see. These people think they slick. They come up with these buzz terms and try to use use them against you. We're supposed to be a welcoming city and the people are unwelcoming here. The welcoming Let me see one more. You see that Chicago, the welcoming city. So these Negroes got a PowerPoint presentation that they want to sell to the people of Chicago why they need to let these people in, while they need to welcome them into their neighborhoods. And the people saying, dang, that, that ain't happening. Now, here's a video. Now, look, 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 look. I'm going to say this. And I've seen this in New York already. When you are in a position where you're put in a position of survival, things happen. Things like this. These fools would have phone instead of helping that man. Now I don't know if that's Chicago or Brooklyn, but it sure looked like Brooklyn. All right, so like I said, you're going to be putting people in a position where they're going to start doing survival things. I mean, I mean, it just happens when you have no food, no way of getting food, no way of getting um, shelter, no way of getting, man, they, they, sometimes it's going to result into ugliness. And uh, you can go from good to bad, especially when you got a family to feed. Let's see. See what this guy got to say. Um, Klaus said, lawyers for black Chicagoans, Frank Avila. Lawyer for black Chicagoans, Frank Avila. Lawyer for black Chicagoans, Frank Avila. <laughs> I would think you have a black lawyer if you're going to re-represent black people. I don't understand that. Um, suggests that federal government pay to permanently house migrants and in the crowd erupt. Black men called Democrats and Brandon Johnson criminals and that they demand they all be fired. Community activist Natasha Dunn agrees. All right, let's see what's going on here. The federal government needs to fund it, and the federal government needs to take all these migrants, vet them properly, um, and make sure there's standards, and then disperse them throughout the 300 or so municipalities, as well as suburban, rural, small town areas throughout the United States. Not just New York City, in Chicago, not just New York City and Chicago. They get that. What deters? Deters what they do to Native Americans? They're doing the same thing again. They're doing the same thing again, bro. They are illegal, right? They are illegal. Right now, Brandon Johnson and the Democrats are criminals. You're locking up guys from smoking and drugs and, and tra trafficking people for a CD. The drag government's doing it. Yeah. Right. right now. That's right. 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 We're going to sue the bosses. We're going to sue the Democrats as civilians because they're supposed to be agents representing the people they voted for. The agents. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a sports agent. If I don't have represent my clients, they fire me. Yeah. It's time to fire. 
Don't let the Democrats have that stupid convention here next year. That's it. Enough's don't enough. That's all I see, right? All I see, right? Is he citizens of Chicago? That brother sweating, boy. <laughs> he upset, man. He's sweating all up under the arms, man. Bro, you need to get, go get you some secret, man. Marching to the gas chamber. Ever since these scumbags right. came across the point. Ever since these European scumbags came across the point. Come on, let me let me say this. Thank you for that. I want to let me. I want to sort of. I want to bring this back because we're we're saying a lot, right? Okay, but to be clear again, uh, to be clear, he's right. There's a lot that's happened. The, the, a lot of that anger and outrage that you see is warranted, right? I mean, we we've been through so much in our communities that we when we see stuff like this, this is traumatic for us. This is traumatic for the people in our community. That's right. Federal government. Now I'm going to say this, and uh, uh, one more time: the black community is in desperate need of funding. We got a lot of black millionaires in entertainment and sports that could care less about the black community. They can care less. They don't put money into the black community. Hey, we got sometimes more uh, white. Philanthropists decided to put more money into the community. Like for an example, and a lot of people probably don't know this, there's an organization here in New York called the Menacing Organization. It's a community center um, in Harlem. Uh, Puffy has donated. Um, Donald Trump has donated. Matter of fact, the skating rink um, on um, 110th and... Um, Malcolm X Boulevard, Central Park section there, there's a skating rink. That's the Donald Trump skating rink. Donald Trump put his own money to refurbish that skating rink where underprivileged kids can have a place to go ice skating. Now, a lot of these people do this to offset taxes, but they're doing it. And we don't have enough money. We don't have enough people. We got all these black billionaires black millionaires who do who could care less about funding programs they want to start their own program so they can get a tax write-off for it for their own self-preservation but there's many many organizations out here that can use their help i've been involved with senior citizens activities activity coordinator trying to get money for seniors for food where we can give them a meal uh, for two bucks uh, uh, for lunch and dinner I mean for breakfast and lunch Where we can kind of offset them Not spending too much money to eat Where we try to provide activities for them And dances and parties And educational seminars And things like that We we can't even get money from AOC And money from Jamal Bowman To do those things So we're desperately in money for after school programming For these kids to keep them off the streets And to put them in a position where they can educate them On how to uh, have um, uh, specialties in their skills, fixing cars, producing movies and TV shows, you know, like they do at Bricks over in um, Brooklyn and things like that. That takes money. And if you're sending these people into the community and taking that money to do that, you're destabilizing our efforts to grow our community. And that's why people are upset. It's not xenophobia. It's not racist. It's no, we have to build our communities. If they have a community over there that caters to them and won't accept them, let them go there. Most of us over here in the black neighborhood don't speak no Spanish anyway. So we are, we got a huge language barrier already. How are we going to be able to coexist? And, no, man, no, don't do that. Take them. It's like, yeah, why are you going to take a bunch of, you're not going to take a bunch of Asian uh, immigrants and put them in the black neighborhood. That does serve no good. You're going to send them to the Asian neighborhoods, which is right. All right, another Brandon video. Let's see what he is, has to say. And particularly our black families. I'm doing now. This is Brandon Johnson gaslighting black people. 
This is one of the most despicable videos that this punk has done since he started his mayorship. And I'm surprised that Chicago, because he's fresh into this position now. I don't even think he'd been here a year. I'm surprised that Chicago has not recalled this son of a gun. Because this is him gaslighting you. And you need to understand he's gaslighting you. He said in this statement and had the nerves to post this video. When individuals say black Chicagoans want what asylum seekers want, it's not true. Black Chicagoans want what they deserve. And I will not let us versus them mentality interfere with our work to provide a better life for anyone who wishes to have one in the city of Chicago. Well, first of all, Brandon, it ain't about us versus them. It's about us protecting our neighborhoods to where it can continue to grow or gatekeep our neighborhoods where it can continue to grow. We don't need nothing to stifle or paralyze or put our neighborhoods out. We need to gatekeep our neighborhoods just like any other ethnic group gatekeep their neighborhoods. You ain't going to see, they ain't going to be trying to infiltrate a bunch of these black immigrants into the Jewish neighborhoods. You're not going to be sending these um, Costa Ricans and, and these Guatemalans and these Venezuelans. You're not sending, you won't even send them to, to the Latino neighborhoods, but you definitely ain't going to send them to the, um, the Ritzy Tissy area of um Chicago. So it's not about us versus them. It's about you doing what's right for the city of Chicago. We didn't ask these people to come here. They wanted to come here, but we didn't ask them to come here. Let me let Mayor Brandon talk. To continue to make sure that Chicagoans who have been in this city, who have needed support, and particularly our black families, I know there's been a tremendous burden. There's no in particular black families. Don't particularly. This is the way of saying all families, especially black families. Yeah, but at the end of the day, you said all families. All families ain't got nothing to do with my neighborhood. My native neighborhood is 90% black. The 10% are not black. They, and we've inducted them in the Black Hall of Fame. They rock with us. But they in there in a black neighborhood, and they know they're in a black neighborhood, and they know it's a predominantly black neighborhood. And if they don't want to be around black people, which is their prerogative, they can go to a neighborhood of their own community. But we welcome you here, but you got to understand there's a protocol to live in this neighborhood. A black protocol. And we're going to be on cold. And we ain't going to let nobody break us off that cold. At the end of the day, it's black. But we'll receive you. We'll love you. But at the end of the day, it's black. So here he is gaslighting again. Particularly. Sound like Kamala Harris. Who's going to benefit all? But it's going to benefit everybody, particularly black people. Let's shut up with that mess. Particularly on black Chicago. I am fully aware of that. Y'all know where I live. Uh, who cares? Now he's trying to make his black stance. Y'all know me. Y'all know where I live. I live from Fifth and Jenkins. The big yellow house. Miss Lucille's baby boy. Well, you sure ain't acting like Lucille's baby boy. Yeah, I know how many schools have been shut down in Austin. Mental health clinics. Administration after administration has taken away from black people. And yours ain't going to be no different, Negro, because you're trying to do it right now. Talking about not mine. Not mine. And I want to make this point very clear as well. We're trying to make sure that migrants are not on floors. The hell black people had to do just to get to Chicago and build communities there. It's more than just about floors with us, dude. 
Florence was the least of our worries. We had to worry about a mob of people stringing us up and burning us alive. These people don't have to worry about that. No, even if they slept on the floor, they still got to come up. Anytime you come to the United States of America, the land of the free, the home of the brave, the land of the so-called free and the so-called brave, a land that black blood and black hands built, you are on the come up. Nine times out of ten, you're going to get carte blanche. You're going to get a whole lot more in your first 90 days than most black Americans got when they began to develop in this country. Again, gaslighting. This dude is a gaslighter, boy. So when individuals say that black folks want what migrants want, it's not true. It's not. Black folks want what they deserve. And to compare the needs of black people to individuals who are being forced out of their countries because of bad foreign policy, who are living on floors, comparing the conditions in which descendants of slaves have had to endure to migrants who are sleeping on floors, I question how much you actually care and love about black people and understand their conditions. Now, he's saying this to black people. He's not saying this to white people. He's saying this to black people. I question your blackness. If you're out here comparing migrants sleeping on the floor to the plight of the black people and you're comparing it and not understanding this is something we can easily do for them but can't couldn't easily do for you he's doing the joe biden you ain't black the nerves of this guy mayor johnson sir all that stuff is just chitter chatter Yada yada. At the end of the day, you're trying to get these migrants into black neighborhoods that are already dying, that already need help. And you ain't helping them by putting them there. You're going to destabilize them. And that's what they want you to do. They're using you as a black bootleg, a black democratic bootleg pu puppet, a progressive puppet. And the progressives love this guy. You know, he's destabilizing the black neighborhood. So, I am done on this one. Chicago, take him from the drop-off location. Live, Sub-X News, on the spot reporting. That's a migrant bus. That's the city of Chicago. Take him from the drop-off location where the, bus, where the trucks drop him off. And then they, uh, they're shipping them all over the city. Again, I'm going to repeat myself. This proves the city is on bullshit. The city is total bullshit. And I'm going to start... I'm going to start fucking talking shit now. If the city liked these people, and the city was pro-migrant, and the city has humane, and the city was social justice, and the city believed in humanity, then what would they do? They would keep it in one place. Oh, no. They're getting dropped off here at the police station. There you go. That's where they're getting dropped off at. Man. You get on a coach bus and you get dropped off right here, right outside. Right? And that's what's happening there, right? There you go, man. So that's what's happening there, okay? So imagine they get on a coach bus, wherever they're at. They take that long bus ride, long ass bus ride, 24 hour bus ride, right? These guys are sleeping outside here, see that? I don't know which district, which police station we're on here. And, and there you go. Welcome to America, man. So they were in downtown Chicago, right? And now they get, there ain't. Yeah, they, that, that's some messed up stuff here. I don't even know if I want to be doing this. Let's see. There you go. So they got off a coach bus. We're hanging around in that area where I was. A oh, 15 district. Thanks. Thanks. Appreciate you. Um, and I don't know, man. Hey, they, 
I'll tell you this, this ain't no damn humane way to take care of people. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, man. You might, like I said, you might think I'm soft, but this, this ain't the way to treat people, man. This is no way. This is not 140, uh, I think we're at 170 million dollars of spending. This ain't 170 million dollars. That damn bus, man, that's 200 bucks a day, man. They don't, they, 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 I said just leave them on the coach bus tonight and let them sit there. There you go. That, that's their welcome to Chicago right there, man. So that's what's going on in Chicago with uh, Mayor, um, this mayor. This mayor needs to be recalled. He's not handling the job. And what really makes me upset is it, it makes black politicians look bad and where it makes people, it may put people who are not black in a position not to trust a black politician. You got these mammy judicial judges kissing the Bidens behind and doing whatever they can to make Biden look good and say stupid stuff out like I wish he, I wish he would I wish my family was half as good as girl if you don't sit down your mammy and is on an all time high here's an article say Biden administration weighs 26 federal laws to allow a border wall construction. I told you Biden playing this game back and forth. He's going to act like he's against some of Trump policies, but he's really low key for these policies. He just can't do it in front of everybody. He has to play <clears throat> the antagonist against Trump. And that's why he used people like Christian Sinema and used people like, um, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Joe Manchin. They're his beard. They do the things that he would do if he was a senator. And he enlists them to be his fall guy. 